Whether you're a student looking for an internship or a new grad looking for a full-time job, finding an opportunity within the software industry can be pretty daunting if you don't have any work experience behind you. And applying on websites like Indeed or Hired.com feels like you're just sending your resume into some sort of void that you'll never hear back from. The good news is there are ways to make your resume stand out without having any work experience at all. And in this video, I'm going to show you five ways to do that. That's not to say that you're automatically going to get the job if you do these things you're still gonna have to kill it at the interview but it'll help your resume stand out regardless of not having any work experience. The first method is through competitive programming. If you're not familiar with competitive programming, it's pretty much the art of solving data structures and algorithm problems for competitions or just for fun. A lot of people will use websites like HackerRank or LeetCode to prepare for interviews, but there's actually a lot more to it. In fact, a lot of schools in North America will offer what's called once a year the North America Invitational Programming Contest or NAIPC. Chances are your local university City will have a chapter, a competitive programming club, that you can enroll in and actually compete. A lot of recruiters look for competitive programming competitions and experience when they look at your resume, so having one of these bad boys on your resume will really help you stand out. Additionally, a lot of different platforms like for example Caddis will have rank lists where you can see the people who are the best in a region or at a specific university. And when I was in university, I actually got contacted by a Google recruiter who found me through my Caddis profile because I was ranked one of the top in my university. So it's really worthwhile looking into competitive programming because not only will it completely make you a beast and completely ready when it comes to um, you know, actually killing the interview, but you can actually get scouted and noticed from doing really well on this as well. So I have a bunch, a big list of a, a bunch of different websites that you can do competitions on, and in the description of this video, I'm gonna be providing all the links that you're gonna see throughout this video. Method number two is hackathons, and a lot of you should know what a hackathon is. If you don't, it's pretty much a 24 to 36 hour event in which students can form groups and build a project geared towards any specific topic that the hackathon might specify. So back in the good old days it used to be you could just create a hackathon, pro you could go to a couple hackathons, you know, do a couple hackathon projects, put it on your resume and you're good to go. But as hackathons become more and more popular, all students are going to them, a lot of people are going to them, you need to find a way to stand out. Having a project that you did at a hackathon isn't good enough anymore. So there are a couple ways to do it. One of the ways I heard a lot of recruiters talk about is after you create a project for your hackathon actually continuing it and pushing it further than just the hackathon itself. Um, it shows that you're able to work with a team, it shows that you're dedicated to a specific project, it shows that you can actually handle you know a live product that people are using and that's pretty good experience that recruiters love to see. Another way you can use hackathons is you'll notice that all these hackathons will usually have sponsors and sponsors are there for one reason and it's because they want to recruit and they want to get their name out there. So chances are, if you, for example, if Facebook is sponsoring a hackathon and they have a, a, a specific challenge in that hackathon, if you were to rank well in their challenge, chances are they'll also give you and your group an interview to come and work at Facebook. A lot of companies love to do that type of stuff and a lot of companies accept resumes at hackathons. Now here are a couple websites you can see, for example, upcoming hackathons. We have MLH.io. MLH is a sponsor for a lot of hackathons, so usually they're the ones behind um, the funding for these hackathons. So this is a great list to actually find out when events are happening. Then you have hackevents.co and hacklist.org where you can specifically um, you know, filter out whether or not they offer travel reimbursements, if they accept high schoolers or if there's a fee to join. So use these resources and just remember going to hackathons alone isn't enough anymore. You gotta find a way to really stand out, whether that entails winning a prize, whether that entails taking your hack to the next level by continuing it after the hackathon or anything that a lot of other students aren't doing. A lot of getting a job is actually standing out from the crowd instead of having a lot of experience that a lot of other students have. Now this third method is where a lot of students have a lot of different misconceptions and that is becoming an undergraduate research assistant for a professor at your university. This is actually what I used to land my first job and it's actually a lot easier than it sounds. Now the big mistake students make when they try to find a professor to work with is they'll just go up to a professor and say hey are you hiring a research assistant? 
And you have to realize, a lot of these professors probably get asked by students on the daily. And they're interested in having people work with them and having students that are interested in their research, but what they don't like is being stepping stones or feeling like they're just a buffer on your resume. What I did was I found a professor that I was truly interested in her work, and what I did was I was like, hey, could I, you know, one day maybe come in and learn from you, or sit in in your lab and watch you work, or could you give me some volunteer work just so I can get an idea of what you're doing and what your research entails? And a couple of months of volunteer work actually led me to an eight-month uh, eight research term that was paid, and that was actually what got me my job. Now, when you're reaching out to professors, I encourage you, instead of just looking at their name and sending them an email, actually find out what type of research they've done. Try reading one of their papers. Send them an email and ask them if you can discuss, you know, some of the, some of the ideas that you read in one of their papers or if they can clarify it for you. Show that you're actually interested in what they're doing and they will reciprocate. Now, there are a lot of different ways to find a research job. My best bet, if I were to give you advice, is to actually email the professor or go visit their office hours and do some research beforehand so you can talk about the research, you know what you're talking about. A lot of schools, for example, will have maybe research um, uh, job boards where you can find uh, professors that need research assistance. A lot of these times, these positions will be GPA uh, barred, so if you have a low GPA, this method of going to career opportunities for your school might not not work um, and a lot of the times for example you can get assistantships and grants that will actually pay you to do research with that professor that will also require GPA so for the sake of just getting experience and making your resume look good and actually learning from the person you're working with this person that's been in the field for 20 years I recommend like I said before just learning a bit about them learning a bit about their research and actually just going in and talking to them about it and asking them if they can guide you on a project to help you learn more about it and use that to foster a relationship with them and get some actual experience working with an amazing person. Number four is actually the one that I think will have the highest chance of getting you a job and that is contributing to open source projects. For those who don't know what open source is, it's pretty much where your code base is accessible to anyone else. So finding a project that someone has done or maybe a framework that they've done on GitHub that is open to the world and contributing to that, fixing bugs, writing code for it. Every time I talk to a recruiter and I ask them what they look for in an applicant's resume other than work experience, open source projects are always the first thing that come out of their mouth. So let's take a look at some of the tools you can use to find open source projects and how you can sort of get involved. Because I know a lot of students, um, the reason they, they haven't done open source projects is because they don't think that they know enough to contribute to a project or they don't know how to find a project. And I'm going to break that down for you right now. So if we go to github.com, what we can do is we can pretty much just type something in like Python on, and we can actually browse a lot of the repositories. Now, what you can do is you can sort by, you know, the fewest stars if you want to find a really small project to contribute to, or most stars if you're interested in contributing to huge projects like TensorFlow or other things like that, but it can be a bit overwhelming if you just try to search all the 755,000 repositories in Python. So I've looked at a couple websites and I found two that are pretty good. Now, number one is called First Timers Only, and this website is completely dedicated to helping you contribute to your first open source project. It has some tutorials on how to actually contribute and it has projects that you can find that you can actually contribute to. Now it also links to another website called upforgrabs.net and in this project, in, in this website, you can actually find projects that are looking for developers to contribute to them. So if you were looking for a Python project to contribute to, you can find a lot of these people that, a lot of these projects that the people that run the projects have actually listed here because they are looking for people to contribute to. Open source project shows that you can pretty much work not only with a team but solve bugs on a product that is actually actively being used by a lot of different people. That is why it is so appealing to recruiters because it's almost exactly like what you'll be doing on a job. You will be contributing to a GitHub repository depending on the company you work for or any other code base uh, system and they will be looking for experience like this and that's why work experience real work experience is so uh, important to them because you have the experience of working with a team and all of that you can get from contributing to open source projects as well now there are also a lot of I'm gonna be including uh, software ex uh, engineering stock exchange 
a link to how you can actually find some open source projects to continue uh, contribute to and also some Quora links that you can look through and sort of sift through but I highly recommend every one of you guys look into contributing to an open source project and if you don't know enough to contribute to the project try to learn about the project and just take it slow you know there's no rush just try to learn as much as you can and try to contribute in small increments. Now this last method a lot of students will shy away from because they don't think they're a social person or they don't want to put the work in but I promise you I know so many people that have had positive results from doing this and that is pretty much just leveraging your network and creating a network. Now if you already had a network you probably don't have to watch this video because you probably already got a referral into a company that maybe your uncle or someone you know works at and let me tell you referrals from internal employees work quite a bit better than just trying to apply online. Now this part is for people that don't have any network or don't know anyone that works at a top company that they want to work with. What you're pretty much going to do is first of all you got to make sure that your LinkedIn account is completely popping. And I mean like it is if a recruiter were to go on there and they see it it would look good. You have um, you know if you don't have any work experience you have projects that you have on here all that good type of stuff and what you're going to do is not only will LinkedIn automatically recruit for you in a sense as in um, LinkedIn if you have your profile set to looking for a job recruiters can actually contact you through them you are gonna start contacting recruiters through here and the way you're gonna do that is pretty much just looking up different recruiters for companies you're interested in working in let's say I want to work at flip um, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna look at flip recruiter or something like that I'm gonna type in flip recruiter and you can see here that we have a lot of talent acquisitions talent acquisition agents um, that pop up and you're not gonna want to spam them and a lot of students do this so do not do this do not just send them three giant paragraphs telling them who you are and sending them your resume and saying I hope to hear back from you please let me know if you have a job actually try and connect with them it's the same thing as with professors right don't make them feel like they're just another you know step in your journey to get a job make them feel like you actually want to learn from your experience and you should your intentions should be completely genuine the people that I see succeed at LinkedIn networking the most are the people that message a recruiter and say hey I'm really interested in knowing what it's like to work at flip could I ask you a couple questions or can we sit down sometime next week for coffee and just asking genuine questions like how do you like it at flip what was your journey to go you know and work at flip or what does flip look like uh, look for in engineers questions like that that show that you're actually interested in the culture of the job instead of just getting any job that comes your way that you're actually looking for a fit and you're actually looking to contribute to the company that you're working for a lot of recruiters actually get sort of pissed off when they see an applicant who plainly just wants a job, the first job that will come their way, and they don't care where they work at. And you know, a lot of the times recruiters will be angry when when people, when at the end of an interview, the recruiter will be like, hey, do you have any questions for me? And the applicant will be like, no, no questions, because it just shows that you're not actually interested in the company itself, the culture, the, the background of it, and what it's actually like to work at that company. Um, so if you do this method you really have to be empathetic you really have to do it because you generally want to learn more about the company and because you're interested in the person you're contacting so what you would do is you would you know connect with them send them a message like hey could I ask you a couple questions about what it's like to work at flip I'm a student and um, you know I'm looking at flip as one of the biggest companies I'm considering working at um, would I be able to ask you a couple questions here or could we hop on a call or could we meet for coffee and just messaging a lot of different people on LinkedIn and expanding your network like that and you know if it goes well or if you and a recruiter really resonate you can even go so far to ask well um, if you think I would be a good fit for flip would you mind passing my resume along or um, you know submitting my resume for me or something like that and you know if they see that you're a culture fit they'll do it for you recruiters are there to make sure that their company gets the best possible fit for their company possible and if you prove yourself to be that person to be just not another student that's hungry for a job and 
be a student that actually cares about contributing and doing meaningful, fulfilling work at a company that they care about, then they will help you and they will work to your advantage. Now, another great tool when you're doing this is Hunter.io. If you're not comfortable with messaging people on LinkedIn or if some people aren't messaging you back, what you can do is you can actually find their email by using this cool tool called Hunter.io. And I've talked about this in my previous videos, but what you can do is pretty much if you know the company they work for and their full name, you can type it in and if this website has their email, you can get it from them and send an email to them um, straight up. And this method is actually how the Forge reaches out to recruiters um, in order to get uh, job applications for our platform. So uh, if you'll notice, we have a couple of different job applications here um, on the Forge that we have open and we actually get those and we actually talk and interview with recruiters pretty much by doing the same LinkedIn method. So I know it works and I know tons of students that have followed my advice in the live streams and have done this and have met with so many different recruiters and have gotten job offers from it. So there you have it guys. That is the end of this video. Hopefully you found it useful. All the links will be in the description below. And if you are interested in learning more about how to land a job and ace coding interviews, make sure you sign up for free at theforge.ca where we pretty much do these videos every single week. We have job postings that you can apply to. Uh, companies specifically recruit from us. We have resources that we email out all the time. And we also do Q and A's with engineers at companies like Google and Microsoft to see their journey. And we also talk to a lot of recruiters and you know, we talk about what they're looking for in applicants and we sort of um, pass it on to you guys. So hopefully you found some value in this video and I hope you guys put in action some of these uh, methods that you learned here today. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys next week.